Let's do one final problem when it comes to the binomial, binomial distribution. This is um, number six in the course packet on page 121. It's, um, it's problem 10 from chapter seven, except that I've modified it slightly. So your firm has decided to interview a random sample of 10 customers in order to determine whether or not they're gonna change some product. Um, your main competitor has already done a similar but much larger study and has concluded that exactly 86% of the consumers approve of this change. Um, unfortunately, your firm doesn't have access to the information, but you may use it in your, your computations here. So I know this sounds horribly unrealistic, um, but uh, in Chapter 7, we're developing a lot of machinery that we're going to be able to use in Chapters 9 and 10 when we're, um, we're back in the real world. So just, just bear with me for now. Let's, um, let's, let's look at Part A. So what is the name of the probability distribution of the number of consumers who will approve of this um, change in your study, in our study of 10 customers, that is? The answer to Part A is going to be binomial. Um, here's why. Remember that the binomial distribution counts the number of yeses out of n tries. So in this case, you, you want to note that um, we're, we're, we're trying to find whether consumers approve or not of this change. So approving or not approving is a dichotomous outcome. So that's a yes-no situation. And in part A, we're asked, what's the name of the probability distribution of the number of consumers? So that word number is quite important, indicating that we're counting the number who approve. So you know, we're, we're counting the number of yeses. That makes this is a, bi a binomial. Um, I'm going to go over to the sketch pad for a second. And let's just um, take some notes. So let x be, oops, let's try that again. Let x be, this is kind of annoying, um, equal the number who approve out of the 10 that we interview. All right, back to the problem. Um, part B reads, what is the expected number of people out of the 10 who will approve of the change. Well, the key here is to recognize some words. So the two words that you need to recognize are expected and number. So expected means that you're after an expectation and number indicates that you're after an XB. So that expected number translates to the following on, if we go over to the, this, the all right, so here is, we want the expected, and then the number is XB. Now, how do we find this? Well, what you want to do is go back to the course packet, and this slide, roughly page 119, gives you all of the formulas you need for the binomial. So here we go. The expected number is just N times pi. So let, let's... Um, Let's go back to the, um, to the sketch pad and write in the answer. So this is going to equal n times pi from that uh, slide. Um, n in this case is 10. Pi is 0.86. Therefore, the expected number of yeses is 8.6. So out of 10 uh, tries, we expect 8.6 yes 8.6 people to approve of this change. Let's go back to the uh, packet here. Now, what is the standard deviation in the number? So the keywords here are standard deviation, that's telling us we need a sigma, and number. So standard deviation of the number. So part C is asking us to find sigma sub xb. Now, how do we do this? Well, we go back to the course packet to that page that summarizes all the formulas we need to know for the binomial. And that formula turns out to be the square root of n times pi times 1 minus pi. It's a minus in there. And if we fill in the numbers, this will just be 10 
times 0 0.86 times 1 minus 0 0.86, which is 0.14. And if you do the math, this works out to be 1.0973. Let's go on to part D. So part D reads, what is the expected percentage? So those are, those are the two terms that you care about. Uh, you go look this up on that, that page that gives all the formulas, and you'll find this. So the expected percentage is, there, there's the expected part, the percentage is that we're after this random variable p. So p is just the fraction of people who say yes. The, um, the slide in the course packet indicates that this is always equal to pi. Therefore, the expected percentage is going to be 0.86. Let's go on to part E. Now part E reads, what is the standard deviation of the percentage of people? Well, we've, we've seen some keywords already. So one is standard deviation, the other one is percentage. So we want the standard deviation of the percent. The word standard deviation tells us that we're after a sigma. The word percent tells us that we're after a p. So we're going to go look this up on that page in the course packet, and it's the last formula on that page, this is equal to the square root of pi times 1 minus pi all over n. So we can go fill in our numbers at this point. Pi is 0.86, 1 minus pi is 0.14, and n again is 10. So if you do the math, this works out to be 0 0.1097. So that's a decimal point right there. You can put a leading zero there if you like. Let's go on to part F. Part F reads, what is the probability that exactly eight of your interviewed customers will approve of the change? So I'm going to translate this into symbols, and I'll, I'll first work it with the formula. So what is the probability that exactly 8 approves? So that's going to be, what is the chance that xb is equal to 8? Well, there are several ways to find this. One is to go back to the formula. So let's do that. This is equal to n which is which is 10 choose x which is 8 in this case so 10 choose 8 then the probability of a yes is 0.86 raised to the number of yeses that we want which is 8 times the probability of a no so that's a time symbol there the probability of a no is 0.14 raised to the number of no's that we want well we want two no's now what is 10 choose 8? I'm going to go over to the side here and, and work that out. So 10 choose 8 is equal to 10 factorial divided by 8 factorial times 2 factorial, n minus x factorial is where that's coming from. Notice the symmetry. So we have an 8 factorial here, and we have an 8 in the exponent of 0.86. We have a 2 factorial here corresponding to the number of not approves, and we have a 2 in the exponent. So those two always, those, those things always have to match up. So let's go work this out. This is going to be 10 times 9 times, and at this point I'm going to get a little bit lazy, and we're just going to call this 8 factorial. Now, I'm going to leave 8 factorial alone, not going to bother to expand that. And then what's 2 factorial? Well, that's going to be 2 times 1. So the 8 factorials cross out. The 2 crosses out with the 10, and we're left with a 5 up here. Therefore, the answer is 45 to this. So there are 45 ways of um, choosing 8 yeses from 10 tries. So I can go down here and label that. This little piece is 45, 
if we go type this into um, into um, pocket calculator, the answer is about 0.2639. So there's about a 26% chance that we will get uh, exactly eight yeses out of 10 tries. Let's go on. What is the probability that exactly eight or less of your interviewed customers will approve of the change? Well, at this point, let's just go right down what the problem is asking. So part G is asking, what is the probability that eight or fewer, that XB is less than or equal to eight? We're gonna have to find this number of ways. One is that we could do um, the, the formula in the previous uh, part for 0, 1, 2, all the way up to 8 and add up those probabilities. Alternatively, we can use Excel. So in a second, I'm going to take you over to Excel. We'll get the answer in Excel, but let's just focus on what these parts are asking for. Let's now go back and look at part H. What's the probability that 8 or more will approve? Well, what H is asking for, if I can write an H, is the probability that XB is greater than or equal to 8. Well, we're going to use Excel and um, we'll, we'll answer this in a second. Then finally, part I. What is the probability that between 7 and 9 will approve of the change? So I is asking, here's an I, the probability that XB is between 7 and 9. 